So like Ryan said, uh, well, we have a new person. So hi, Maria. Um, so I, everyone else is pretty familiar with each other. Uh, but I'm going to be leading the discussion tonight. And tonight we're going to talk about chapter 14 strings. But before we do that, we still have a couple minutes. So I'll just do the quick icebreaker here. Uh, so let's, let's talk about uh, how many cups of coffee, tea, or beverage of choice do you have each morning? Um, I, I can start. I am just a huge coffee drinker. I probably can't live without coffee. And so I at least have one, if not two, by the mid morning. So, anybody else? Oh, I can go because I have to admit that I am a Nescafe drinker. <laughs> so, yeah, so it, I remember when I had an office, everybody could use a nice coffee provided by the office, and I had to buy myself my own Nescafe. But I only drink hot, I can't. I drink coffee all the time, but it's because it's Nescafe, so you could drink, it's like a water with a bit of color. <laughs> Great, awesome. I, uh, I, I drink orange juice generally, and I will usually down a couple of, uh, a couple of glasses of orange juice in the morning. And then sometimes it rolls around to like lunchtime and I've still got half, half a cup there. Excellent. My, my beverage of choice is generally orange juice in the morning. <laughs> Mansa, Maria? I drink, I don't drink tea or coffee. So Smart, smart choice. <laughs> <laughs> I just go and sleep whenever I feel sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that's I a smart a choice. <laughs> glass of honey and lemon in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I drink um, water and coffee, Colombian coffee, Juan Valdez. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, am, I need my jet fuel in the morning. So um, for those who can't get up without caffeine, I, I applaud you because I am, I am not that kind of person. So, all right, excellent. So um, like Ryan said, I'm going to be leaving the discussion tonight. We're going to talk about strings. Uh, a couple of quick housekeeping reminders. I think most of us are generally familiar with these. Uh, the ones that I do want to highlight is that if, if you need me to slow down and discuss, let me know. Uh, most likely someone has the same question. Uh, this is a topic that I will probably get something wrong. So if I do, you know, stop me and we can have a conversation about it. Or if you have a question about it, just, just stop me. It's not going to offend me. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Uh, take time to learn the theory and then, you know, please attempt the chapter exercises and then plan, you know, plan on teaching one of the lessons if you're, if you're up for it and it would be much appreciated. But I think most of us kind of know these already by now. So let's kind of just dive in about what we're going to talk to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about strings. Uh, we're going to talk about the basics of strings. So we're going to talk about some common string operations, uh, specifically talking about the string R package. We'll talk about using regular expressions. We'll talk about the very, very, very tip of regular expressions. So we're not going to dig too deep into them. Then we're going to talk about some tools provided by the string R package to help us work with string data. And then we'll, we'll kind of wrap up with other uses for regular expressions. And I was kind of going through my notes before tonight, and I noticed that we might not get through all of this, which is okay. So some of this might bleed into next session, which would be fine. But just a heads up, we might not cover everything. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about. Uh, a quick disclaimer, uh, I am not a computer programmer or scientist. I think I've made that very clear in this. And this is probably the most computer science -y I will get in this entire uh, group. But so I will say that I will get something wrong. I will miss something. I may breeze over something that's important. If I do, please stop me because I, that's just not, that's just not my training. Uh, also, our discussion will be about the very basics of regular expressions. However, if you want to know more after our conversation, both today and, and most likely next week, there's some excellent resources that the book talks about. Uh, there's a vignette. If you run this in your council, you should get like some information about regular expressions. There's also a book that's cited. This is not an endorsement, but um, there's a book called Mastering Regular Expressions. Uh, I was able to access and read the first chapter to kind of get a little bit more sense of it. But if you want to do 
a real deep dive into this subject, this is the kind of book that everyone says is the one to kind of pick up. So the other thing is, is we're going to talk about a tool tonight that I've used in the past called Regular Expressions, Regular Expressions 101. It's just kind of a wonderful online tool. And this is linked in the, in the, in the, uh, in the slides themselves. But this is kind of like an online tool that I've used to kind of diagnose strings before and kind of use it to kind of experiment with it because sometimes there's string, there's, there's regular expressions I'm trying to create that I use this tool quite a bit. So, but we'll talk about that later. Then the other thing is, is the string R package provides functions for common string operations. And so it was pretty clear in the chapter that it's just going to be the common stuff that you would most likely come across in data science. And so I'm only going to overview a few. I provided some extra examples. So if you access the Slack channel, I tried, I tried to put a diagram together. Uh, it was, it's not the greatest diagram in the world. It's just a basic flow chart of the different functions that are in string R, which we'll talk about later. And then I provided a R notebook with some examples that we'll kind of walk through. Again, there's just so much information in this chapter, so many uses for regular expressions and string R functions that it's just not possible to co cover everything. So I will miss something. And then the string I pack or the string I package is, is more comprehensive. It's another package that works with strings. It's available to you if you have something that string art doesn't address. And we'll talk a little bit later about that. So let's talk just a little bit about like big picture here, uh, why we should care about regular expressions. I think at the start of the chapter, it said something like, when you look at a regular expression, it looks like your cat kind of walked across your keyboard. And when I first saw a regular expression, I was like, whoa, this is, this is a completely different language that I know nothing about. There's symbols, there's letters, there's numbers. And I always like, why would I want to know these? And so I kind of just kind of made some quick points, big picture of why we should actually care about this stuff. And the first thing is, is that when we're talking about processing or doing an analysis of text data, not all text processing can be handled with a function. Sometimes there's cases where you'll run into that a function's not going to work for you and you have to create uh, a regular expression to do what you want to do. Uh, you kind of, if you kind of scan through some of the um, Slack channel a little bit, sometimes you'll see people that have a data wrangling issue that's kind of complex with string data. And more often than not, you'll see somebody that says, oh, this sounds like a, a, an issue that needs to be addressed with a regular expression. And so, that's kind of one thing. The other things is, is that there are some parts of unstructured text data that are somewhat semi-structured. So we'll talk more about what string data actually is. But when you think about just like textual data, so let's just say like, I don't know, customer reviews, there might be specific patterns within that data that you can use to, or you can use a regular expression to pull out of it or to clean or to fix. So there's functions available to us to help tidy this data for analysis. And so it's good to kind of know what, what are the ways we can write a regular expression to work with the string data so that we can tidy up our data even more. And then it allows us, it allows us to convert long monotonous tasks into simple code, thus increasing productivity. If you do have an opportunity, I do suggest reading the first chapter from Mastering Regular Expressions because it talks about this idea, and this is more of a computer science-y thing than more of a kind of anal analysis thing. It was this idea of creating a, a regular expression to go through an entire book to find times when there was like a double word, like the, the, or that, that, or uh, uh. And so the person kind of put it like this, that you could do it by hand by going through all that text data, looking through, you know, thousands of pages of information, but you could write a 20 line snippet of code to pick out those things and then fix it. And you saved hundreds, if not thousands of hours of just do going through it. And then this is what I was kind of going to pose to the group as just kind of a discussion from reading the chapter is, you know, did you see any benefits of learning about regular expressions while you were kind of reading the chapter? And so I'm going to open up that question to the group.
I can share uh, when I actually used it in production. So um, I, as of now, I have created one set of instructions that I actually use at work. I think it's like 20 lines, <clears throat> but it, it's, it's something there. And, um, and one of the things that I needed to do was I would have a, in a cell, I would have a list of PO numbers and they would all come together. Like you imagine um, a customer issues a whole bunch of POs, um, but instead of it being 10 lines, <clears throat> it's 10 POs all in one cell or in one line together in, in, as one string. Um, but I needed to find somewhere in there where the consecutive numbers 455, 456, or 459 were all together um, because that would tell me something that I needed to know about those POs. So maybe the first one had 456 and the last one had 459 or the seventh one had 455. So um, I, I ended up using a regular expression on, on that to be able to search through that string and look for one of the uh, the, the substrings or whatever that you want to, that I needed to find. So in previously I would have done this in SQL and it would have been, you know, where PO um, like um, percentage four, five, five percentage or percentage four, five, six percent or whatever. Um, but anyway, this one was able, it, it was a little bit shorter and, uh, and it worked. So I high five myself. <laughs> Excellent. Anybody else think of any benefits? Yeah, I use them regularly to uh, to clean my um, vari my variable name. Some if they are too long, stuff like that. So I, I just clean. And sometimes, because I use labeled variable, sometimes um, the labels are not clean. So maybe there is some ellipse, or maybe because uh, the way that the is it puts. So I do a bit of cleaning, but. Uh, uh, but my, my, the most use is, um, I use it, but not directly myself. I use the package SGMISC. And after he helped me to find in the variable or in the variable label, uh, for example, if I'm working on, um, on a brand and uh, they send me uh, 10,000 variable, if I just want to be sure that uh, if it's for YouTube, if I put YouTube somewhere, anywhere where there is a word YouTube is either in the variable name or in the value of the variable, anything. It just helped me to, to dig in big file. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I mean, just working with just like big files, like big wide files. Yeah, when we talk about survey data, you know, Sandra, you and I are on the same page because we work in marketing, but it's working with like very wide data, working with these string constructs kind of helps. Anybody else find any benefits that they have? I also use it for cleaning my data. And another thing which I found it very useful was when I run, uh, when, when, when I generate scripts to run, run files in Windows and I have to, um, I have to use, I have to run the files on Unix system or the other way around and have to get rid of the end of the character line and all those things. So that this has been very helpful with that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you're working in a Unix environment, like the G reps, the old G rep and trying to find that, I, I, I remember all that stuff too. So excellent. So um, yeah, I think those are all great. And that kind of gave me kind of sense of where everybody's kind of at with this. So some of the stuff may be review for, for some people here. And if it is, I'll just kind of breeze through some, most of this information, but it sounds like everybody's kind of gotten a benefit from using one string data and then potentially using regular expressions or functions that use regular expressions to um, help with their workflow. So that's excellent. So um, here's just a couple of examples. Uh, like I said, I think most of you kind of understand what string data are, but these are strings. It's just text data. Um, it's character data. And the book just kind of talks about, you know, how we can actually set them up and, and specify them in R. And there's two types of uses. There's the double quotes and the single quotes. Uh, if you do have a single quote in your, your sentence, you need to use double quotes. And then if you don't have any of these quotations in there, you can just use, um, you know, you can use single quotations. The other thing, oh, excuse me, uh, here's some other examples for you. So, you know, an email is considered string data. Uh, if you're watching college basketball, uh, March Madness is coming up. Uh, there's some teams for you in no particular order, but uh, so on and so forth. 
And even tweets and emojis are considered strings. So I just shamelessly took this tweet from Hadley, who we've talked about before. Uh, you can actually, there is a package out there called Tweet R that you can access the Twitter API to pull tweet data and do an analysis on that string as well. And what's, what's really interesting about this too is, is that even emojis are considered text data. So if you want, if you really want to nerd out about it, here's the full emoji list and the codes that are used to render it in different systems. I've linked this so you can kind of look through it. But if you want to know how this is represented in text for each code, you sure can. Uh, but this is pretty much every single emoji that's available across various types of systems. So even emojis can be considered string data as well. So um, string data is pretty uh, ubiquitous uh, across uh, a lot of domains. So with that, there's some general rules that we need to follow when we do this in R. The first one is escape characters. So remember that the backslash is considered a special character in, are there, there are certain characters that are considered special in R. And so sometimes we have to use that backslash to make sure that we um, get what are called literal characters. So, you know, a, a double quote is considered like a special character because we're trying to treat it as string data. So if we want this to be the literal quote of this, we have to backslash it out. And there are certain cases where you're going to have to use multiple backslashes. And so the book talks about if you want like a literal backslash, you have to go backslash, backslash to get that backslash to come in. Um, and so there's also some other special characters that were discussed. These are the most common ones, uh, like new line or tab or any non-English characters. So if you're working with text data that's in a different language, um, you, you know, you'll have these non-English characters. And what was nice about this is that if you are interested in what other special characters there are, this was kind of a, a good resource right here. If you just put it in your console, there's some documentation about it and it will walk you through all of the different special characters that are available to you. And you can kind of look for it. And it's pretty much any use case that you have, you can find it for yourself to you know, help, help find what those special characters are. Uh, also, what's nice about characters is we can store them in a vector. So here's a string and a vector. Uh, we have different separate uh, pieces of string data. So we have string in a vector. It's just a vector using that kind of C function to put it together, but pretty, pretty basic stuff there. So let's just say we want to count the length. So let's kind of talk about some of these common operations that the book talked about. And all of these functions are part of a tidyverse package called string R, which we'll talk a little bit later. But there were some common operations that the book talked about that you can use to kind of help you with some stuff that you need to do. So the first one was this string length function, where all it does is it basically takes every single piece of string data and it counts the number of characters. So in this case, check is five characters long. Uh, out this cool string, obviously I'm trying to play, do a joke on it, check out this cool string. Um, it says 23. Now, if you just do this one here, it says 20. Does anybody want to take a guess why there's actually 23 counted here? With string length, what do you think? So this is the whole spaces. string here. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I think because of the spaces. Yeah, so it counts the spaces. So when you think about string data and you think about this function here, things that you may not see, the computer will count. And so in our case here, string length, it counts the white spaces. And this is kind of important because I've run into this working with string data in the past. Sometimes these white spaces, they're represented by an actual, one of those special characters. I think it was slash S or slash N. And sometimes when it gets encoded into R, those get brought in. And so it may look like us as a human that it's just a, it's a space, but in actuality, it's a double slash S character. And so sometimes it's nice to kind of do like a string length to kind of get a count to see if there is maybe extra characters that we don't know about in our string data. I also wanted to play, uh, the, the example in the book had NAs. It obviously doesn't count NA because that's a null value, but I was interested 
um, in R, there's different types of NA values. So there's a such thing as like an NA character. I think there's like an NA integer. There's different types of NAs. And I was interested if it would count NA character, but it wouldn't. And that just makes sense because it's a, it's a null value. It doesn't exist. So some other ones, um, there's combining. There's the function of combining. Uh, I didn't really know about stir C. I thought it was kind of interesting to see this because does anybody know of the other two common ones that a lot of people use? And it talked about it a little bit in the book, combining strings. There's two kind of base functions. I use past. Yep, paste. And then there's another one. Does anybody remember it? There's paste and then there's paste zero. Um, paste zero is like a is a, it's like a base R function where it just doesn't it doesn't have any spaces, so it will just lump it all together. But what's nice about using this stir R C function is that it uses recycling rules. So in this case right here, what I have is I have one piece of I have one piece of string data here, and then I have a vector, and then I have a last, and so uh, kind of giving an ode to where my where where I live currently, is this string C will recycle them. So the output actually is check out Lincoln, Nebraska, check out Omaha, Nebraska, check out Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. And so, if you have a vector in here, what it's going to do is it's going to recycle it, which I thought was kind of neat. And then also too, if you just want to collapse it into one string item, you can just use that kind of collapse argument and it will put it all into one, which is great. Let's see. So then subsetting. Uh, so subsetting, basically, if we want to pull out a certain part of our strings, uh, what's really kind of nice, and we talked about some like um, data structures that are already in R for us. There are some data structures that are kind of in the base R, and what I'm going to use is one called state.name, and I'm going to kind of share it with you. So if you ever work with like US states, you can go state.name, and it already has all of the state names in there for you in base R. So you don't have to, you know, create your own vector. You don't have to import it. It's already available to you. And so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to use the first three, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, just as ways to kind of highlight what these functions, what, what these functions do. So in this case with state abbreviations, with stir sub, what we can do is we're saying take between a range. So take the first and then the third, and these are inclusive. So in our case with Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, it's gonna take ALA, ALA, ARI. Now, if we wanna reverse it, we just change these to negatives and switch them, and they're going to take the last three. So ONA for Zona, SKA, AMA for Alabama. I really didn't know of a use case for this, but does anybody have like maybe an idea of where you would want to like pull a per pull a specific like back part of a of a of a string? Maybe not for state names, but um, I've, I've used this sort of concept all the time. One, one that comes to mind is like invoice numbers. So maybe an invoice number or a series of invoice numbers all start with the same 10 digits because, you know, it represents like an, an office or a customer or something like that. But what you really need is those last three that keep coming or that change or something like that. So. That's, this is cool. This is a, a cool way to extract the end of something. Yeah, that makes I, sense. I, I'll go ahead, Sandra. I, I use it sometime, but I also need to have the, the length because sometimes you don't know exactly uh, how many you want to use. I use that, but I do that in Excel. Sometimes for cleaning some stuff, I, I use Excel to do exactly the same. When I want to clean, uh, to clean my label, on my name of variable, I use Excel to do that. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's a that's that's a good one too. Um, I while while Ryan while you were talking, I was just thinking about like I only work in Nebraska, and so if I think about zip codes, I don't know, maybe this is just an example, but like six eight, you know, anything with like six eight, I think six six or something like that, I could just take that all out and just use those ones to simplify it. But that's that's a good one that I thought of. 
Does anybody else have any other ones where you might use the stir sub? And I guess you don't have to use the back one, but maybe the front one too that you've used it for. I use it to check uh, the the file the file extension names. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later about like some other use cases for regex. Yeah, that's a good one. I didn't think about that one. So you could use this as kind of a check to make sure it's like a .csv .pf pdf png oh that's a good one i didn't think about that cool awesome so um some other common operations uh convert case uh basically they just allow you to change all the characters in the lowercase or uppercase uh so here's another example again i'm still just using state lower alabama alaska arizona so um all lowercase if i want to put it all uppercase i can use stir to upper puts everything into uppercase now there's this other one called stir to title. Um, you gotta be kind of careful with this one. It works in this case because we have Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, um, and it just changes the first letter. But if we had extra words within it, it would capitalize each one. And so, and I'm just thinking about, because I work in marketing customer reviews, if I try to do case to title, every time that there's a space in between, it's gonna capitalize that next after that space. I, I think that's how it behaves. And you know, not everybody that gives you information on a customer review is gonna be uh, you know, perfectly entered. So sometimes you gotta be careful with case to title because it may not change what you want. But the ones that I commonly use the state to lower are, are stir to lower and then stir to upper quite a bit. So, um, that was kind of just kind of the base kind of examples that were provided. So those were some of like the common string op operations that were performed. Then the book kind of transfers over into talking about regular expressions. And so when I was reading the book, I kind of came across these like general rules to follow when you think about regular expressions. And I say regular expressions, uh, just kind of the short form of it is, I'm going to say reg X is what I just usually call it. Um, but you'll usually see it kind of represented like this or regular expression, but I'm just going to refer to it as regular or reg X from now on. Um, I think there is kind of this interesting perspective because it kind of changed my view a little bit because I thought that, oh, if I have, if I know how to do regular expressions, I'm going to have all this power and I could capture all of this data in text. But then when I read this, I was like, oh, well, maybe I need to change my perspective on this a little bit. Some people, when confronted with a problem, think, I know, I'll use regular expressions. Now they have two problems. And I have caught myself before thinking that I have a perfect regular expression, and then I find out that it's actually missing data. And when it's missing data, the regular expression on my part gets more complicated. And then before you know it, I have to transfer it to one of my team members to read it, and they look at it, and they may not be as familiar with regex or because I'm not a computer programmer and I just kind of hacked it together, they'll sit there and say, wow, this is super complex. Do you know what's going on? And I have to say, no, now we have a problem. So um, I say this, you know, facetiously because regular expressions are really powerful, but use them wisely. And so I don't know if there's any Lord of the Rings fans out there. There is no one ring to rule them all. And I thought it was really interesting in the book, and I'm going to ask your, um, everybody's perspective on this, but the example was how to validate uh, an email. And if you haven't, like how to validate an email and string data, and I was like, in my head, I was like, oh, that, that'd be pretty easy to do. But, you know, obviously I was making a lot of assumptions when I did that, and I read through this and I was like, wow, it is actually a lot more complicated and it's almost impossible to do it. And when I first read the question, and I'm not trying to make fun of this person in, in any way, but anytime you say over the years I've developed this, it's like, wow, that is super complex if it's take, taken that much time. And basically it talks about these answers, talk about um, how complex it really is. And it goes in through like these diagrams and it's just a simple email, like, you know, my first name at gmail.com but it actually gets really, really complex and you can kind of read through this. And I looked at this diagram and I was like, whoa, this is a little bit too much. But if you do read through this, cause it's kind of interesting because it gets at that concept of, 
yeah, regular expressions can get super complex and don't think that they're just like the, the, the one tool that's going to solve all of your text problems. Uh, so that's going to lead me to, I think I have a question here. Oh, so yeah, this is my question for you. Uh, we talked about the power of them, but in your work, where might you get a false sense of power using regular expressions? Where could they potentially go wrong for you? I think many times because I usually look at how the regular expression is working with a, a SDR view or SDR view all, and it only shows you so much. So it, you can assume that it's working as you intend it to work, but maybe not, especially when you have like rules that is like and or or, like several combi combining several expressions. And I think those can get tricky. Yeah, and that's the trap that I've fallen into is, and we'll talk about those, those like the capturing groups. Like I built a lot of them where it's like, or this, or this, or this, or this. And then before you know it, it's just this, this monstrosity of a regex. And then, and it may not capture everything that you think it's capturing. So that's a good one. Anybody else? The one that I had in mind for me um, is URLs. Sometimes we do some stuff with URLs and URLs generally have a common pattern to them. But when they don't have a common pattern is if a URL has like a lot of that extra trailing information on the, uh, on the back of it. And so extra trailing information on the back of it's kind of hard to capture. And so sometimes I get a little overzealous by thinking I can get structured data out of all of that URL if I use a regular expression because it, it sometimes misses things. So, but anybody else? I sometimes use that to just capture some things and it has happened with me, with me several times that I, I, I forget that, that I need to put space in between things and then everything just gets jumbled up, yeah. <laughs> And spaces get tricky. So like I said before, so it may to our eye as humans when we read it, like those spaces may seem like blanks, but in all actuality, there's like an actual extra character in there that's representing the space that the computer reads it as a space and renders it. And so I have caught myself before one missing those cases and then second um, spending hours trying to figure out, well, why is this not capturing it? Why is it not capturing it? It's because there's some special character in it, you know, and yeah, so I, I got my, I've gotten myself into trouble with that too as well. So I, I, I say that you can get yourself in trouble with regex. I mean, it's a super powerful tool, but the one thing that the book kind of talks about to resolve this complexity is break the problem up into smaller bits. So see if you can solve one problem with a little bit of regex, then move on to the next thing that you can solve. And, you know, just know your limits because sometimes, you know, I'm not an expert in regex and I'm sure there is somebody out there that is an expert in it, but sometimes you just got to understand that it's not the one tool or the one ring that's going to rule all of your, your text and string data. So you just have to make sure that you verify it and use it, use it appropriately. Um, and then you can also use, and someone mentioned string view and string view all to see all the matches. Yeah, I, I think that's great to kind of see the matches as well. If you have some example data, like the one tool that I've used before is this regex101.com. What you can do is you can dump some example text test strings into this and you can write your regular expression in here and you can kind of test it to see if it's capturing the data that you want. And sometimes, um, sometimes this has been really nice for those situations where the computer is rendering um, like the white spaces and it's actually a different character, but I see it as a space. This has helped me sometimes, not, all, not in all cases, but sometimes it's helped me. So I, I, I think this is a good tool. There's all kinds of regular expression tools out here, out on the web, but this is the one that I use most. And that's also nice too, because it has some of this quick reference stuff too. So if you kind of forget what one thing does, you can access it here down on the bottom to kind of get more information on what it does. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so let's kind of talk about some of the basics of using regular expressions. 
And like I said, this is the very, very basics. I'm not going to dive too deeply into like all things regex. Um, but the first thing the book kind of talks about is like exact matching. And I'm going to use, it's kind of different from the book because it doesn't really render very well. So like stir underscore view doesn't really work well in, um, in the slides. So I'm going to kind of put it into a tidy text format so that we can kind of better see what's happening here. And I'm going to use this thing called month name. Again, month name is just another data source that's available in the base R package. So you don't have to in upload any kind of data or import it by any means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an exact match. But what I'm going to do an exact match for is for months that or for months that contain BER. And so that would be September, October, November, and December. And I'm going to use this function called string detect, which basically if it de detects that regex match, it's going to convert it into true. If it doesn't, it's going to go false. So basically it's, it's saying, does this, does this string contain this pattern within it is basically what it's doing. And you can see it in our, in our data set, that's what happens. January doesn't have BER, so it turns into false. But September, it has BER at the end, so that's true. October, same thing is true. Now, the one thing to remember about this is, is if, if one of our months had BER at the start, it would. Um, the other thing, too, is, is that this is only, can somebody tell me what the issue is with just matching with, with this BER here? That might have been a kind of a muddy question, but can anybody take a guess? Why are you referring to case, lowercase and uppercase? That's it. Yep. Now you're yep. Good. I'm glad somebody got that because that was kind of a bad question. But yeah, so this is only going to capture lowercase B E R. So if for some reason there was a capital B in one of these, it won't match because it doesn't have a capital B. Because this is case sensitive. Um so another example would be, we'll say we just kind of have a general range or we want to capture something that has a character before it or character after it, after it, and it's just any character. Well, that's where we can use this, the period to do that match. And so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find months that contain you, but have a character before it and after. And so you can kind of see here that when we do the string detect and we match for this specific pattern, we can see that we're capturing January, February, um, June, August, so on and so forth. Now, this is good because it's capturing any character, but what's the issue with this piece of string? What's the issue with this using the dots? And that might be. So say if you was the first character, would it capture, so say like, I don't know, say we had a word here that had you, a lowercase you at the start, would it capture it? And maybe I'm asking my own question because I don't know. What, does, anybody, does anybody want to take a guess at it? I don't know. I, I'm not sure because I'm wondering now if it has, if there was a lowercase you at the start, if it would capture it with this. I'm not sure. I might have to think of an example to to test it, but if anybody can test that, I'm not sure if that's going to happen or not. But um, but anyways, the biggest thing is we're just trying to capture a U. What can we try with April and the A? April and A. So this April right here. Yeah, and if we put an A, will April will be um, capture? That's a good question. I don't know. Let's try it. Um, mm, where's my common operations? We have the basics. Let's try it. Put an A. Oh, well, I got to run. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to run my libraries. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. Um, let's see. No, it doesn't. No, it okay. gives me a false. So I guess that's one issue. So if there was a word that started with a U and you use that capture all character, at least in the, in the example that I have, it didn't work. So. And Excuse me, can you show us how you get the, the regex expression you show us previously when you have a, when you tape your text? Um, how I'm not do sure. you get it? How do, you know, you, 
you show us uh, previously that you could have something to remember the expression, stuff like that. So how do you get the window? Oh, the window. So I yeah. think the, the stir view. So this is it stir view? No. Um, yeah, it was, okay. It was when, uh, when you say, when, what you oh. use, okay, to, uh, to tape the string and to check out. Hmm. Re, re, um, the 101, regex. Regex yeah, one. how do you get it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, so regex, so it's regex101.com. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that I, yeah, that's the one that I use. I mean, pretty much you can find a bunch of tools like this online. Uh, this is just the one that I one time Googled, I found, and I liked it. So I'm, I'm repping it now, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> so if you go back to the, to the code. Yep. And it didn't work when it had the period in front of the capital A. It didn't. It didn't find um, April or August. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if it, you take away that first period, then it will. Mm -hmm. Right. It. It should right because the rule yeah. would be that any A. So it has to have a capital A and then any character yeah. afterwards. So. Yeah. Yeah. So isn't there one for like a a possible? So the period means there must be something in this location mm -hmm. but i want to say that there's one and i can't remember what it is now but there's one that says it might be there might be a um a character in this location oh that's a good one like, well could you do no i don't know does anybody yeah. have an answer for that one that's a good question i can't remember but um hmm it's captured so, anyway I'm, I'm yeah no i mean i think i think that's a good question I, I don't know like those like specific matches those ones i get like really hung up with and and honestly that's where it gets where i just test it and kind of see if it works yeah i mean i know that's not the computer science way to do it but i should know what it does but you know sometimes it's like i got to play around with it and just test it and see so um somebody can come and slap my hand and tell me no but yeah. that's just the way i'm gonna do it um good question though that's awesome because i don't know someone should see if they can find an example of it because I, I think if you were to do that you would really be saying find an a anywhere so if there's a period that means it's at least the second character mm -hmm. and if there's no period it means it's the first character so to put something in the front that says maybe there's a character in front of the a and maybe there's not Another way of saying that would be just find an A anywhere. And anyway, I don't know. But <laughs> that, that, that's how my mind would go, which is probably why it takes me two days to write a regular expression. But yeah. could you do it with or, the or function? Either have a dot or have nothing before yeah. the A. Well, that might work. So, like, you do like a capturing group like this. And it's like, or am I doing that right, Mansa? So like a dot. Or a dot, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I mean, it captured, did it capture August? Yeah, it captured August, so that works. Yeah, so that's, that's, for this example, it looks like it works. There's probably, there's probably, there's probably some character that you could put before it, but I just, I, I just don't know it. Yeah. So if somebody comes across it, you know, let me know, please. Because I, I could see situations where you would want that for sure. Um, okay, cool. Awesome. Um, so then we got to anchors. Uh, I've seen these before. I've used them a couple times. I haven't used them a lot lately, but um, I kind of like this mnemonic that it gave us because it kind of helped me remember um, that if you begin with power, so the, the carrot, you end up with money, the end. All this basically does is it says that like with our match right here, it says that it has to start with a capital J. And the dollar sign says that it has to end with a lowercase y. Now we'll talk about this specifically here in a second, but all I really wanted to do is I wanted to capture the months that start with a capital J, end with a Y and contain any character or any lowercase character within it. And so in this case, you would see January gets captured June, oh, maybe it doesn't work. Oh, no, because it doesn't end in Y. But July captures it, um, and I don't think there's any other months that end, start with a capital J, end with a Y. So, yeah. 
Um, we'll talk more about what this is here in a second, but the anchors are kind of nice to say, like, it needs to start with this letter. It needs to end with this letter, or I guess it could be numeric too. So I, I shouldn't just say letters because you could have a numeric in there as well, or like a number or something, as long as it's a piece of string data. Um, you can also, now we're going to kind of take a level up. So those are kind of like the basic ones, the basic pattern matching. We're going to step up to like complex patterns. So these were what were known as character classes. And so these are like special patterns that match more than one character. And I think one of the important things that the book talked about is that some of these um, special patterns use like a, 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 a backslash D in R, you have to make sure that you do the double slash because we want the literal, we want the literal slash because in R, this is treated as a special character. And so we have to escape it out so that we get that special character. So if you wanna match any digit, you can do um, slash slash D, any white space. So like your space tab, new line slash slash S. Um, if you wanna capture like a certain group of things like A, B, C or a range, you can put it in here. If you wanna match outside of that group, you can use the caret ABC. So this will match anything except AB or C, or you can use any type of special character within it. And so kind of going back to the example that I was sharing with before, can anybody tell me what this group is capturing? Does anybody wanna take a guess? That's yeah, all the lowercase letters, A to Z. Yep, all lowercase a to z. And what's nice about this is if you put a hyphen in between these, you should get that range of value. So a all the way through z. Um, and you could do this with capital letters too. So if you wanted to capture all lowercase letters and uppercase letters, you could do uppercase a dash z. Um, if you had a special set that you just wanted, so like you just want to take out abc, you would just put abc. You can also put numbers in here. So like zero through nine, you can also do these special characters as well. And if you have spaces, you can include a space as well to capture it as well. And you saw the behavior of this. Again, it's just capturing, um, starts with a capital J, ends with a lowercase y, contains any lowercase letter. So uh, where are we at time-wise? Okay, so I'll probably go about another five minutes and then we'll kind of wrap it up. Is that cool, Ryan? Okay, cool. Um, so we, we've already been kind of talking about alternatives here. This is another um, kind of complex pattern that the books talks about. Uh, this uses a pipe. And so basically what it's doing is it allows you, it's kind of like an or statement, like capture this or this. And so I came up with uh, what I call the gravy example. I kind of expanded on, um, I kind of span, expanded on what the book did to kind of show the difference. So the book had just gray or gray, but I decided let's let's just add gravy onto this one. Um, sometimes when you do this all, all day long, you gotta have jokes, I guess. But anyways, when we look at this, what we're doing is it's trying to capture all of the, um, it's trying to capture the spell, the different spellings of gray. So gray with an E, gray with an A, and all this capture group is saying is, hey, if it has an E or an A, capture it. Well, if we want gravy added on top of it, then we need to add another capture to it using an or with the AV. And now we get gravy for true. So I'm going to call it the gravy example. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there you go. You get the gravy example tonight. Um, so the other thing that it also talks about is like capturing repetition. And so with repetition, what we can do is there's two types of way to capture repetition within a, in a regular expression. We can either use these special characters that have common rules applied to them. So with a question mark, we can capture zero to one plus one or more uh, star or asterisk zero or more. However, if we wanna be more precise of how many characters come afterwards, we can apply this kind of curly bracket NM notation. So if we have a certain number of characters that we want to know that we want to capture after the pattern is matched or that we want to, there, or excuse me, a certain repeated, repeated 
character set that's in there, we can use this. We can use the N. And then the N is just going to be a number. If we want N or more, we could just do N, comma, uh, space. At most M, we can go comma M. And if we want to put it in between a range, we sure can as well. And so I used one of these in my example here. So can anybody tell me what the star does in our previous example that we've been working with? What happens here when I use the asterisk? Or yeah, another can go many number of times. Yep. So as many number as any as any number of A through Z's, you know, A through Z letters. So if somebody misspelled January here and it was still a lowercase letter, it would it should still pick it up. So if this was customer reviews that I was trying to pick up certain months to see if I could, I don't know. That, I mean, that's just a use case. I just came off the top of my head. Um, you know, if you had some misspellings in here, it still would capture it. Um, so you got to be a little bit careful with that. But yeah, it captures more than one. Um, I think this is the last one that I'll discuss. And then I think we can, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, I kind of took this one from the book. So this one is like just the precise um, matches. And so here's our piece of string that we have. Um, basically what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna capture the, the repetition C. And what we're looking for is any time in the string that C repeats twice. So in this case, it happens once, C, C, it will capture it once. Now, there was something in the book that talked about that it won't recycle this, or I can't remember the exact terminology, and someone, you know, somebody jump in and remind me. It will only capture this one time, so it won't capture the second CC. I can't remember the terminology that it used, but there's something where it will only match this pattern one time. It won't do it twice. Yeah, Does anybody remember? I, I can't remember what it was called, but um, I do remember finding out that it's like one, find one match and it's done. Find a match, true, that's it. It's not going to look for anything else. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, I can't. There's some there's some official terminology. I can't remember what it was anymore. So if anybody finds that, and what is the difference if you put um, extract underscore all? Because oh. we have extract and so I don't know uh, I don't know if it work or no if we put all but I know that sometimes you couldn't put underscore all. Yeah, that's a good question. It if we do a stir extract all, it might take that second pattern. We can test it real quick. Let me see. Let me see if I can find it. It might take both C's if we do it then. Um, complex patterns. Let me see where are we at. Complex patterns. So repetition, A through Z, so bear with me here while I find it. So this one here, let's just add it and see. So it would be this one, right? So if we do all, let's just see. I've, oh, I gotta run the object, string extract all. No, but in, th in this case, it only did one. So it didn't pick up the, it didn't match the CC and then the CC, so. Maybe for next time, I'll have to think of more about what string extract all and what cases it can be applied to. Or if someone has a quick answer, more than welcome to jump in. Um, maybe I'll look into that and I'll kind of dig into that for next time. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about with this is you can see what these, what else these do. You know, this is one or more, um, and then this is any range. And the last thing that I'll kind of talk about before we kind of wrap it up is this idea of using the question mark. It's always important to remember that matches are greedy. So it's always going to return the longest string first. So if you want it to be not greedy and to return the smaller match, you have to use the question mark at the end. I remember when I was watching some stuff about regular expressions, people are always throwing that terminology around as like greedy or this regular expression is greedy. I never really understood it until I read this chapter. And then it made sense to me. It's like, oh, you know, there are possibilities where our regex is meant to capture a larger string, but there might be cases where we want to capture that smaller pattern that gets matched. And so how we change that is with the question mark. So I think that's a good stopping point for now, because I'm going to be honest, I don't 
grouping it back references, I need to spend some more time learning about. <laughs> That's where I'm the weakest. So um, I'll kind of turn it over to you to Ryan to wrap us up for tonight. Cool. Well, thank you. Appreciate it very much. I, I know we've said it before on other topics, uh, the idea of practicing to get really good at these concepts, but maybe this is really the time that applies is reg reg regular expressions. I know take a lot of practice and um, it's been a while for me since I practiced them anyway, but um, no, this was good. Appreciate definitely your time. So Colin, you'll, you'll cover it again next week then and we'll finish that out. Yeah. So I have some, I have some examples that I've, I posted and I, like I said, I put like a, a like a chart or like a, I made an attempt at making a flow chart or something that will make it easier to talk about the functions. Okay. I don't know, but you can look at it and then I can kind of share that next time too. So. Cool. We'll cover that for next time. So we got just a couple of minutes left. I thought I'd let Maria, if, if you wanted to share a little bit about yourself and about where, what you do and your experience with R and um, anything, we, we, just, we got a minute or so left. So I thought I'd let you jump in if you want. Well, thank you. Uh, so I'm Maria. I'm from Ecuador. Um, I am a social scientist. I lived in the U.S. for a long time like six years or something before coming back to Ecuador. And I do network analysis. So all the cleaning stuff that I do before network analysis, I do with the tidyverse. So it's very important uh, for me. Many of the networks are based on text or similarity between texts. So it's very important to, to know, you know, regular expressions and strings, but also could be networks of people. So, so then it's yeah, the different, the different tools of the tidyverse. All of them are super important, and I'm just um, learning. I, I don't consider myself an expert; more like beginner, intermediate. But I'm very, very excited about the all you can do with R. I really like it, and so I'm excited to be here. Yeah, good. Well, we're glad to have you, and I can assure you that uh, that we're all learning uh, along the way too. We've got a few experts on this call, but um, I'm not one of them. So we'll, uh, it, it always does surprise me when we talk about something and then, you know, Sandra knows the answer to it and she's been working at it for months or, or months is like, oh yeah, I've been doing whatever it is for years. So, so it's, it's good. There's a lot of uh, good information, knowledgeable people here. And, um, and other than that, we're learning together. So. Um, we'll pick it up again next week and uh, congratulations everybody on I think week 16 or 17 or so on this. So we're, we're getting there. All right. Everybody have a great night and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.